is my pleasure to introduce uh, Angelica Fuentes, who will host a discussion on advancing women's leadership in fintech with the inaugural Female Founder Award winners. Uh, Angelica Fuentes is the founder of MoveUp. She's a noted businesswoman and impact investor, and she's always emphasized equity, women empowerment, education, and ESG throughout her career. She has participated in the World Economic Forum's Gender Parity Program, the Private Sector Leadership Advisory Council of UN Women, and is a member of the Latin American Program Advisory Board of the Woodrow Wilson International Center. Her work has been widely recognized, including being recipient of the UN Women's uh, WAP CEO Leadership Award, and the first female CEO to receive this honor for championing gender equality in the private sector. Angelica, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for this kind introduction, Martin. Uh, and good morning, good evening, and a warm welcome to all. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Alexa Varsavsky and Isabel Oriol, the inaugural winners of the Women's World Banking Female Founder Award, which was launched this year as part of the annual FinTech Innovation Challenge. And on behalf of Women's World Banking, I would like to thank Anthemis for providing the prize for this year's award. I believe it is very important to recognize female leaders but especially in the financial technology sector, we're still in this 21st century and 21 years into it, there's still a very significant gender gap. As a businesswoman myself, I know how difficult it is to advance in the world dominated by a masculine perspective. But I also know the great impact of women empowerment in the sustainable development of countries. Now I'd like to introduce you to the co-founders of Ada Impacto. Alexa Varsavsky is the CEO and head of product, leveraging her experience in developing digital solutions for startups and corporations across various sectors to create social impact. Isabel is the COO and head of business development, bringing with her more than eight years in the social sector as a consultant for innovation and social entrepreneurs. Together at ABA Impacto, they seek to propel unbanked women in Mexico and eventually in Latin America into the financial system through an alternative credit scoring process utilizing WhatsApp. Alexa and Isabel have demonstrated exemplary leadership in building an inclusive workplace and advancing women's financial inclusion. And I very much look forward to our discussion, which I trust will inspire other women who currently are or aspire to engage in FinTech. Welcome Alexa and Isabel, and allow me to congratulate you once again on being named the first ever of the Female Founder Award. We're very thrilled to have you join us today to share more about your entrepreneurial journey. Thank this, you so much. Uh, Thank you. Oh, well, I, I can't imagine. <laughs> so, I that, you know, it's late in the afternoon for you, so I really appreciate you joining us today. And I have my first question, which entails wanting to know your individual paths on becoming female founders and how this fintech journey began. I want to know, uh, was there a special moment that inspired you to lead you to co-found Ada Impacto? And Alexa, if uh, you can perhaps respond first and then Isabel. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, well, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Angelica and, and everyone in Women's World Banking for, for this opportunity. Um, and, and we're really happy to be sharing here today. So I, I would say that my, my journey into being a, a, a fintech founder started with my first company that I founded when I was 21 straight out of college. And I had that first time experience of what it felt like to build a product and a service that people were using and engaging with. Um, and it was also where I learned the power of technology, right? That's where I understood that if you were to build something that is super efficient and scalable and engaging, you can actually have an amazing and positive impact on a lot of people's lives. Um, and so then I, I kind of took that focus into the, 
more corporate world where I worked with a lot of very large banks um, and was very exposed to the technological situation around finance. And, and I was really passionate about, about building these solutions, but I started to realize that I wasn't that passionate about the problems that these banks specifically were trying to solve um, and that I wanted to use technology to solve a problem that was closer to my heart. And so I, I took time off and I, I thought about what problem was sort of like going to be the, the North Star of my career. And, and I, I sort of did this little exercise where I said, okay, I'm 80 years old. I look back at my life and what do I want to have changed on this earth by, by, by living here, basically? What, what grain of salt would I want to have, have dropped? And I realized that I just wanted to create a, a more kind of level playing field for women and a better opportunity for women, um, especially when it came to the financial and the educational angle. Um, I think obviously women, we face a lot of inequalities across many different areas, whether it be safety or healthcare. Um, but I think for me, I, I, because I, in my career, saw myself so empowered through my career and through my ability to be financially independent and to learn, um, I wanted to focus it on that. And so what happened was that I started to search for, for people and companies and organizations that were empowering women through financial inclusion and, and financial education and financial access. And so then I found Isa, uh, who will share her story now. And, and Isa Isabel was, was already working in a sector that is focused on this. You know, she was working with a microfinance company that was lending to women um that have small businesses so it was thanks to sort of that kind of personal exploration that i had and this meeting with with isabel that i that that you know we came up with ala together basically isabel yes um hi everyone thank you thank you so so much for the opportunity um i guess in my case i never thought i would be starting a business in the financial world um, I didn't know, uh, I mean, I've always known I wanted to be part of the end of poverty. That was like the, the call for me. So since university, I searched for the most efficient way to do this. Um, and I started uh, in Brazil with social corporate responsibility. I then moved to Chile and had the opportunity to work um, and join FAO, so the UN. Um, I collaborated with different NGOs and startups. But it was when I learned about the microfinance world that I thought, um, like, this is it, you know, like it, it, it was direct impact. Um, so, so I saw that people at the bottom of the pyramid um, need access to, to financial products in order to put into practice their, um, their abilities, right? So for me, it's funny because it was the search for social impact that brought me close to the fintech world. Um, um, and yes, yeah, so after five years of uh, working in the microfinance world, um, we saw the opportunity um, of bringing technology um, even further and, and making and having a, a great, a bigger uh, social impact. And like Alexa said, that was the point where we met and it was a clear match because uh, she brought this technology and product design uh, background. Um, and I could bring this more um, um, social impact background, let's say, and that's where where everything started. Well, that is amazing story. I'm, I'm so glad you met and you created Ada Impacto. There was something that, that struck me, Alexa, that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. said that you like the power of technology. Having said mm -hmm. that, I've heard this, mm -hmm. this amazing phrase that men or the masculine energy are willing to share the earth and the sky, but not the power. Mm -hmm. In looking more broadly into this industry, only 7% of fintech founders are women. So I have a couple of questions. Why do you think this is a case? And, you know, within this context, um, you as women, I want to know if you mm -hmm. faced any unique challenges when you were establishing your business just because you were women? And if you did, how did you overcome that? Because I think that's, that's, a, that's a question that a lot of women have. You know, yes, I face a lot of that, but mm -hmm. I don't know how to overcome a challenge, mm -hmm. you know, as big as that one when I have to face it. 
Hmm. Yeah. Um, do you want me to get started or Isa or? Yes. Or, yes. Oh, yeah, okay. So I think, yeah, I think that there is a, FinTech is really interesting because on the one hand, it has this sort of the democratizing power of, of technology, right? And this sort of, this is sort of what I mean when I say power and technology. Technology at the end of the day is, is the thing that, that I think breaks the most barriers between people and reaches people that would have never been reached and um, provides products in ways that we would have never imagined them. But both finance and technology um, are still very uh, male-led industries, so to speak. Like when you look at just the numbers of the people that are involved and, and the people in leadership. And so I think that um, fintech is a sector in the entrepreneurial and technology world that is still uh, most likely victim to a lot of bias relating to, to the gender dynamics. So, for example, you know, if, if a lot of the leaders in banks were men, then maybe they will go off and start a fintech because they were in banks. And so now they go to fintech. Right. Um, I think this is changing, as, as we know, which is which is awesome. But I do think there's the remnants of the of the boys club in finance that probably is kind of like uh, throwing a bit of, a, of that energy into the, the fintech space. Um, but having said that, I think that because technology is so democratizing and so amplifying and so and gives you such a large reach. I think it's a sector where where women could have a lot of opportunity because it's almost like a different way of looking at the financial world. Um, and, and when you look at technology, something, you know, something similar has happened historically, right? Te technology has been historically a very male led industry. So so, you know, you're kind of combining two very male led industries into into one kind of combined sector. And so it's difficult um it's it's clearly a place where we have to do a lot of a lot of work essentially um yeah and okay. and in terms of Sorry. yeah no no go ahead you were gonna i thought you had finished. no go sorry I, I i wasn't sure yeah i mean and in terms of the 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 challenges maybe that we have that we have faced on a personal level um i think i think isabella and i are really fortunate that we have a very strong background in consulting and technology consulting. So we have already been very exposed to environments where, um, for example, large corporate financial clients have been our clients in the past, like in my case, and we've had to navigate these environments very often. Um, and I think that when in, when learning to navigate environments that are, that are maybe very male led or that there's, there's a lot of, um, this sort of like potential power position, uh, we've, we've probably learned things along the way that also make it, that also make it easier to do. And that's just kind of years of experience and, and sort of putting it into practice. And I think in my case, and I'll let Isa speak for herself, but I think in, in my case, um, I feel like something that, that has worked for me in the past is to be very sort of assertive about your, the things that, you know, be very honest about the things that you don't and, and don't, um, and sort of like pick your battles in these moments, right? So there's moments that that you will face these sort of weird biases in meetings or things like this because they do they do happen. I mean, I remember, you know, once I I was leading the whole project for this for a for a big bank in in London and I walked into the room and they were like, "Oh, can you grab me my coffee?" And I was like, "Right. Well, I'm actually directing this whole thing." So so you do encounter, <laughs> you know, you do encounter these these situations. Um, and, but I would say that, that, that you, you know, you have to always be balancing like what, what you're doing to advance your personal career in that moment in time and what you're doing to advance, you know, the overall situation of, of that we face as women. Um, and I think, I think being very sort of confident, assertive, knowing that you can do the job that you've been hired to do and believing that you can, because you're doing it for a reason is what gets you past these, these situations, at least for me, for me personally. Yes, I, I, I can see how uh, that would be difficult. I have had that experience about go give me some coffee, you know, and yes. you know, while you're there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I love that, you know, we have two women who are assertive, who are confident, who have believed in themselves and have achieved what you've achieved so far. So Isabel, I would like for you to talk to us about, um, tell us a little more about Ada Impacto 
but especially how this is advancing women's financial inclusion and something that you both have, and I have to include myself, women empowerment. Us three know, and you know, the Women World Banking knows that when women are financially independent, they do away with a lot of gender violence, whether it be physical, sexual, emotional, I mean, you name it, they can do away with all of that. And on the other hand, um, what were some of the major challenges that you encountered when you decided to focus specifically on services on women? Hmm. Perfect. Um, so at ADA, what we do is we make the access and management um, of the microcredit easier through a WhatsApp chatbot. Um, so in the conversation with the bot, um, uh, these women that live in the informal economy and, and have small businesses can apply for their, for their loan with our alternative scoring. They can receive it and they can repay it. Um, we launched in Mexico where we see at least, I don't know, um, a hundred financial institutions. There are officially, um, 67, but unofficially there are a lot more. So not, um, no one can really be sure about, um, the, the exact number, but what we see is that they're fighting over the same five or 6 million borrowers. So. We're leaving 67% of the of the population in Mexico unbanked, you know. So um, we we asked ourselves how th how this could be how how this could be possible, and what we do um, beyond the score the scoring. So beyond the opportunity to get the loan is we empower um, um, our borrowers uh, through a process of guidance and support by a team of what we call digital mentors um, that power the bot. So we have a, a mixture of uh, human voice and, um, and, and bot, right, of automatic responses. And this is something very beautiful about uh, ADA that came strategically. And um, I mean, I would say it's for sure, I don't know, Alexa, but for sure our mm -hmm. favorite thing about what yeah. goes on at ADA um, yeah. mm -hmm. is that so we hired in order to create this link um, with the borrowers of the financial institutions through WhatsApp, right? Um, a, a very difficult challenge going to the second part of your question. We hired women from similar backgrounds um, uh, from our end user, right? Who again are these women in the formal economy with small businesses. Um, and this was a strategic decision because we wanted to, to build trust and connect digitally. Um, but, and we weren't aware of, of what a great opportunity this was gonna be for them. Because what we've seen now with time is that, um, for instance, over half of them have opened bank accounts to receive our paychecks. Um, uh, they receive training on digital platforms. They have um, a formal career plan that offers them for the first time, like a formal employment, so they can start thinking um, ahead for the first time. Um, so I would say that, um, yes, I guess the challenge of connecting with, uh, with our end user the, that were these women, um, uh, the, like the result of it became a, a very beautiful um, social impact and, and financial and digital inclusion aspect of our human resources plan. You know, you were talking about challenges, um, Isabel, and I think that one of the biggest challenges everyone has had to face has to do with COVID, with the pandemic, but especially women. Hmm. How did you guys adjust to this context of the pandemic? This is a question for, for both of you, whoever wants to answer, that'd be great. Mm. Mm. So, um, we originally believed that, um, that w w doing this in Mexico would be, would be complicated because of the whole context of microfinance, um, uh, rural areas, 
um, and very, let's say, like an old school market, if, if I can say that. And the pandemic, um, as we all know, brought um, has brought and is still bringing um, horrible results. Um, however, in terms of the opportunity that we saw, um, let's say that the, the microfinance market in Mexico has been flat for decades. They, they've been very comfortable um, in having the product that they had because there's such a need that um, uh, with, even if they didn't innovate or try to have a more um, um, uh, a nicer or more um, attractive product, um, they kept giving uh, microloans, right? With, with the pandemic, what, what resulted was that their client started to um, digitalize even more. So for the first time, they really felt the need to do something about it and um, start being more attractive, start being, start using uh, their operations in order to do things better, right? So we, I think uh, at ADA, we, um, we arrived in Mexico at the right time because I, as I was saying, um, whenever we sit with a microfinance entity, we do realize that they do feel the, the urge to start looking for solutions, for digital solutions. They understand that they need to uh, catch up with their client. Um, and again, we, we also see it from the client side that they, they are expecting, they have new expectations, right? When you start, 75% of Mexico has an access to a smartphone. So once you have a smartphone and you have um, access to the internet, you start having new, new requirements um, uh, from your providers. So um, from this very horrible situation uh, came an opportunity to really start using, like Alexa was saying before, the power of technology to make microfinance better and make her experience um, a lot safer. Okay. Um, as we all know, uh, gender equity has been and it still remains an extremely frustrating and persistent problem in every single sector we come across. But I think it's especially in the fin in fintech. Um, I would think it's probably even more uh, persistent in the founder CEO level where women are very underrepresented. I think not just in fintech, but everywhere. But I think that level, mm. you know, would have probably a more persistent problem. You as female founders, and I know um, that is that who believes in implementing policy to truly advance and create that pipeline so women, you know, can, can start covering mm. more executive positions. Um, need to to set that balance when you believe in that you obviously implement policy within the corporation to achieve that we don't need any laws to change in order for us to move ahead um so i want to know what kind of initiatives have you taken to support this leadership roles for women and what positive effects have you seen because of these efforts? So Alexa, if you wanna uh, start with this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think, um, so there's there's a few things about how ADA works that allows women to uh, not only reach leadership positions, but also be a workplace that is available to them in the context of the things that are that are, that are more applicable um, to, to the context of women. So, and um, the fact that we are a fully remote company has a big impact on our ability to hire women in regardless of what situation they're in, where they live, um, they can work from home. We like this team of digital mentors that Isa was talking about, we give them a computer and they can work from wherever, which means that they, in, in their case specifically, they are young, they have children, they would not be able to be employed um, anywhere in, in their surroundings of where they live. And so we are basically creating an employment opportunity that that wouldn't have existed for her context as a woman in the place where she lives. So I think there's the, the fact that we are remote, that we give people these resources, that we have all these kind of digital ways of working 
um, is in itself something that allows a lot of women to come into the workplace that wouldn't have been able to, to, to come into. And then the other thing that we do is we have a very big uh, belief in upskilling and, and like a growth trajectory in the company. And so for, for all of these women that, that are being hired and well, all the people that are being hired in the company as well, um, we have a very clear idea that they can be very junior, they can have very little experience, but that we will invest in their upskilling, which means that they will be able to reach leadership roles, management roles, they will have more skills than they did when they arrived at the company. Um, and, and we, you know, and we think that that is, that is something that like, at, at least I believe is something that does, does squash a lot of women at a certain point in their careers, um, where you're not handing them. It's not just about handing them the role, but it's also about handing them the tools to do the role well. Right. And so that's also what I mean about, about the upskilling. It's not just that we are going to be, you know, fair employers, give equal opportunity, allow for promotions, push for promotions. But it's also that we are going to make efforts around making all of them feel like they can do the job, right? I think I found myself in situations a lot at my previous company where I had a lot of, you know, extremely talented, um, super hardworking, like female coworkers that that it's that you know there was a, there was a bias coming from both directions. Like there, the management wouldn't promote them, but then they wouldn't promote themselves because they didn't feel that they had the skills to be promoted. So I think. In, in our efforts to to upskill, um, we're kind of tackling both of those both of those areas. So yeah, I would say that our, our remote work policy and sort of like this upskilling thing is something that that really is going to help women are, in our company. Well, and I think that that's where you know the world basically is heading after what we've gone through, and you can really give them that great mm. opportunity. Uh, you know, yeah. we were having amazing conversations. Times, you know, time just literally <laughs> running out. Why? So yeah. um, before we close this this uh, great conversation. Um, and you already uh, talked a lot about, you know, what you're doing for women, but there are women out there who are probably thinking about going into fintech and or going even that step further, which is, you know, uh, starting their own companies. This is a question for both of you. And if we can, you know, just like give them very um, precise uh, advice. What advice would you give them? Um, to either start their careers in fintech if that is what they're looking for, and or to build and found their own companies. Hmm. Um, Isabel, should I start? <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, um, uh, I would say I would say to avoid trying to fit into a defined model of leadership. Um, and we we're talking about this the other day, right? Um, um, avoid um, trying to fit into into this model and just get to know yourself uh, and trust yourself because um, in order to excel at being oneself, you must be very happy with yourself, right? It, it, it sounds like a rhyme, but trying to be very concrete, that's, that's what, what I would do. That's what I would say. Hmm. Um, and I'll just... Yeah, I'll just add to that one that once you figure out who you like that self, like who you are, what you want, what type of person you are, to not be uh, afraid to ask for the thing that you want, right? I think like the next step from that, once you've done that introspection and you, and you really know what you want to go for um, and why and why you want to go for that thing at that moment in time in this way that is true to yourself, don't don't self sabotage. Like just just go for it. Right. Just um, uh, ask for the things that you want. Uh, don't downplay your skills. Don't downplay your worth. Um, trust in this kind of genuine uh, leadership, as Isa was saying, or like genuine passion that you have and go get it. I agree. I think that one of the most important things that you mentioned, Isabel, was that everybody has their own leadership. You know, we've, we've been told this is success, this means leadership. But I think that's not true anymore. I think we need to define our own path of our own, you know, way of feeling we are a leader somewhere. Uh, defining success is very different for everybody. And I think it should be a yeah. very personalized thing. And like you said, trust yourself, have confidence in yourself. Ask the, the one thing that I've always said, Alexa, is that the only stupid question you will ever have is the one you don't ask. A question okay. of one is a question of many. 
So with this, thank I would you. love, you know, to thank you. <laughs> I really enjoyed this conversation with you, Alexa, with you, Isabel, and on behalf of uh, Women's World Banking and our event participants today, I want to thank you for the time, you know, that uh, you've spent here, Alexa and Isabel, sharing, Isabel, sharing your experience with us. Um, it has been a very insightful and inspiring conversation. I'm sure a lot of, you know, uh, women who have heard will, you know, finally go out there and get whatever it is that they want. I personally, and we all wish you and your team, Avada Impacto, much continued success. This is something that a lot of women, not just in Mexico, but in, you know, the whole of Latin America and many other spaces in this world need to keep advancing. Um, I'm one that has admired your work since I, um, since I got a chance to read about it. You know, the way you're promoting gender equity and women empowering is amazing. Um, you know, this, this effort that you have to plant a seed of change and to reduce the gender gap in the financial sector is just uh, wonderful. So all I can tell you is continue to work hard you know, which you do. And I know that challenges are not anything that would ever stop you, uh, you know, no matter how hard that is. So, you know, continue being that example for other women and continue being that example for other women of never ever giving up. The world definitely, definitely needs leaders like you, Alexa, like you, uh, Isabel. And I once again, want to congratulate you Thank you very much for this time, for this space, and for the advice and all that knowledge that you have on what you're doing. 